So in this video, we're gonna have a look at percentiles. Um, some people find them a little bit difficult. They're not super intuitive and they don't really come up that often. They just sort of come up as a standalone question, but we have to have a look anyway. So it's a measure of relative standing, which is the first bullet point. Um, and that just means you can see how one bit of data compares to the rest of the data. So it's sort of a fancy way of saying that. Um, so they're commonly used for exam scores and things like the HPAP for anyone who's studying um, or studying to try and get into medicine. So just some examples of how percentiles work. If you're in the 80th percentile, then that means you did better than 80% of people on the exam. That's if we're talking about an exam score. Um, we're just gonna keep talking about that because it's the easiest example. If you're in the 99th percentile, you did better than 99% of people on the exam. So it's pretty much the best mark you can get. I'm not sure if they um, have 100th percentile. I think it just goes up to 99th. Um, and then if you're in the first percentile, then you only did better than 1% of the people, and it's pretty much the lowest score you can get. I'm not sure they have a zeroth percentile again. So um, yeah, I guess we'll just go down and have a look at an example. But well, first I'll just go through the two questions they can ask you. So there are two types of questions. Uh, in both of them, they're gonna give you a list of numbers. Sometimes they're ordered, sometimes they're not. So the first thing you have to do is you have to order them. So just put them in order, basically. Uh, and next, they can ask you two separate things. They can ask you to find the 30th percentile or whatever number they ask. They have to they give you a specific number and ask you to find that percentile. Or they say, say if you got this number or this result or this mark in the exam, what percentile would you be in? So those are the two different questions they can ask you. So we're gonna answer both of those with a, an example question. So we'll go down here. So the example is, um, these are the exam results for a statistics test. So there's 24 numbers um, and there's two questions. You have to find the 60th percentile score and then you have to ask if you got 74 marks say, in this exam, um, say there's more people that took it, but this is all the exam results that are listed, then what percentile are you in? Okay, so we're gonna answer both of them. So we'll do one first. So these are sort of standalone methods that don't come up that often in other places or don't come up at all in other places. So you sort of just have to kind of learn off how to do this particular question. Okay, so for the 60th percentile score, so there are 24, and we'll say results all together, 24 results, and we got 60 out of 100 on our exam. So, or sorry, we're looking for the 60th out of 100 uh, percentile score. So it's uh, percentiles are always out of 100. So we go 60 over 100 multiplied by 24, and that'll basically give us 14.4. Um, so that means, say if you laid all of these out in a line, so one, two, three, four, all the way up to 24, that means we go to the 14.4th place, and that would be our 60th percentile score. So that's sort of what this number means. So 14.4th. Um, but in percentiles, we always round up. So it's sort of a what weird, um, uh, weird thing to do because normally we'd always kind of get the average say but in percentiles we always round up so 14.4 goes up to 15 so then we're looking for the 15 let us get rid of that we're looking for the 15th number okay so then you just count through them one two three four five all the way up to 15 all the way up to 15 and we find that um 72 is the 15th number so that means the 60th percentile score let's say 60th percentile is equal to 72, okay? Uh, so it might seem a little bit odd, uh, a little bit sort of difficult to follow, um, but really it's just something you just sort of have to learn how to do these two particular questions. That's what I found um, when I was doing the leading anyway, that you just have to learn them. Uh, next we'll do part two. So if you got 74 marks, then what percentile are you in? So what you do is you write 74 down and then count how many people, just say got less, okay? So if you count how many people got less than 74, so that's gonna be one, two, three, count all the way up and you'll find that 16 people got less than 74. So I'm gonna write that, that's 16 people got less, okay? And the next thing we're gonna do, I'll scroll down to make some more space. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say 16 divided by 24, because we're 24 people all together, and then multiply that by 100. So you do that, you're gonna get 66.66. Uh, and then again, we're gonna round up. So I'll just say up. So it's gonna be the 67th percentile. 
So if you get 74% on that test, then you're going to be in the 67th percentile. So you did better than 67% of people. So hopefully those two questions sort of make sense. So I guess in this one, 74, you just count how many people are below you because that's sort of what a percentile means. So 60th percent, uh, percentile means how many people do less than you. So, um, and then you, yeah, you just put that over 24 to get the percentile version of it. Not sure if that made any sense, but those are two sort of on their own questions that'll come up. I found the best way was sort of just to, to learn them off. But anyway, those are percentiles. That's um, probably the last we're gonna hear of percentiles, to be honest, they don't come up too often. In the next video, we're gonna start talking about the normal distribution, and that'll pretty much be what we'll talk about for the rest of statistics. That's the biggest topic, and it's the thing you're most likely gonna get asked about. Um, so yeah, so after this, make sure to pay special attention. It's gonna get a little bit harder uh, from here on out. But anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you found it helpful, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.